This is my Snaptain 7100 GPS enabled drone. It's a nice little drone. It's not expensive, but it's not cheap either. And like so many GPS drones, it uses a number of different technologies to provide it with stable flight, GPS locations, the ability to hover in one place, etc., etc. Now it's got several systems on board that it that it has a 3D compass. So here we calibrate it horizontally and we calibrate it vertically. It also has a gyro. So we calibrate the gyro on a level surface. And then we have GPS. You can see the green little satellite icon shows we have 15 satellites. And that allows it to do cool little features like navigating point to point, um, suit some navigation points that you specify. However, when these systems do not work together the way they are supposed to, some terrifying things can happen. And one of those terrifying things is this particular type of glitch known as the toilet bowl effect. And the toilet bowl effect can have any number of causes. I'm not going to get into that. The point is to show you what the toilet bowl effect looks like and talk a little bit about what you should do should this happen. As with most things aviation, the mantra is when shit happens, first thing is fly the damn plane, right? Or fly the damn drone. Uh, in the case of the toilet bowl, altitude is your friend. If you bring it down, you can have a collision with uh, stationary objects or people. If nobody's around, that may very well be the way you want to go, but you also don't want to damage your drone. So generally, when something like this happens, if you can bring it down safely, bring it down safely. Otherwise, a little bit of altitude is going to be your friend. Um, if you have plenty of battery and plenty of time, then you can maybe attempt to bring the drone under control. Sometimes the issues resolve themselves, but anytime you're flying a GPS enabled drone, this is always a possibility and you should always be able to plan for such eventualities. Now, in this case, the way I got it to resolve was I pressed the return to home button and issued it the command to return to home. You see the RTH in the upper left hand corner and it flew up and got some height and then it eventually was able to correct itself and land. However, that doesn't always happen. And as you can see in this video right here, this is a good example where return to home did not go according to plan. And I let it fly for five minutes. And as you can see, the circle just kept getting larger and larger. And so at this point, what I attempted to do was I switched it out of GPS mode. I took over manual control and attempted to fly it manually with the GPS off. And in that case, I was able to get it under control and eventually bring it down. So you have to understand the return to home feature uses GPS. And so because it uses GPS, if you're in the middle of a toilet bowl effect, the return to home uh, may not resolve itself. But if you've got a lot of battery, it's, it's always a good idea to try and let the software resolve the issue and just let the drone try and do its thing at a safe altitude if it starts to swing too far away, you can see right here, this is me getting it under control with manual inputs. Um, you know, it's always a gamble because once you take over with the manual inputs without GPS, if, you're, if your hardware is, is failing, if you've got bad inputs or any kind of bad situation, it's a gamble. And so ultimately, in this particular case, I resolved this by taking over with manual inputs and getting it stabilized. And once I had that, I pressed the auto descend and let it descend at its own rate and successfully landed it. 